All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's Anatomy of a Scam video where we go through part 3 ng Parabolic Theory, no? The last part ng Parabolic Theory. Now, just so you know what you can expect from this video, we will be discussing two separate trades that I personally took using Sir Spyfrat setup. Tapos, we will go through then yung mga questions na nakuha ko from you guys, whether sa comment section or mga iba nag-email pa, mga iba nag-DM through Investagrams or Facebook. So, I compiled those questions, tapos pinagsama ko yung mga questions that I felt were very similar. Okay? So, we'll go through them as well. Well, uh, I asked Senor Spyfrat for an answer to those questions and he graced us naman, no, with his answers. So, we'll go through all of them, answer all of them. Tapos, hopefully, by the end of this video, between the answers to your questions and the trade walkthroughs, maiintindihan nyo na fully yung parabolic theory system. Okay? So, wala nang paligoy-ligoy pa. Let's go ahead and look at our first trade walkthrough. So for our first trade example, I purposely chose a trade that I personally took way back in 2017 that went very, very smoothly. Okay? Ito yung ideal scenario na hinahanap natin whenever we take these types of trades. Yung setup na hinahanap natin sa parabolic theory. Yung quote-unquote perfect setup. Okay? So, as you can see from here, on the week of April 10, RSI ng weekly was at 70.49. Okay? I want you to take note of that number as we go down to the daily chart. I've taken the liberty na i-annotate na yung chart para lang mas mabilis yung galaw natin. Okay? Sa daily chart, when we go the back to that day, so ito yon no? Maikita nyo na nung April 10, RSI was still at 69.29 or 69.3. Okay? Therefore, technically speaking, hindi pa siya pasok do sa parabolic na setup. However, the very next day, naging 70.63 na yung RSI. Now, you're gonna have to take my word for it, but at this time, the weekly RSI was slightly higher than yung daily RSI. Therefore, Pasok tayo. Pasok yung parameters na hinahanap natin. So, I got in on this candle at 29 cents. Okay? You could have gotten in intraday. You could have gotten in at the close of the market. You could have gotten in at the market open. It depends. Nasa sa inyo po yun, no? Walang hard rule na kailangan end of day or kailangan ganito. Personally, if you ask me, I like na sarado na yung candle before I make a decision kasi at least final na. Nangyari na. Hindi ako kailangan mag-wonder intraday kung talaga ba magko-close to ng RSI 70 or hindi or what have you. No? So I got in on this candle and as you can see, from there, smooth sailing tayo. Tuloy-tuloy lang ang pagtaas. Hanggang dito, RSI was at 79.84. Therefore, hindi pa tayo EPHR. Nakabantay pa tayo, no? And then on this day, Nag-83 na ang RSI natin sa daily. And yung weekly RSI natin was also above 80. Now, pagkaganon, as I mentioned, what I did here was I sold on site at close. So, I sold at 435. 0.435, no? So, kung titignan natin, ang rough gains doon, minus comps and whatever, was around 50%. We got in at 29. We got out at 435. Now, I purposely chose a very smooth and non-problematic example for our first trade so you get a better idea, di ba, dun sa ginagawa natin. In our next trade example, I'm going to show you a trade I took slightly more recently na nagkaroon ng mas konting problema to help you navigate din, okay, kung ano ang mga pwede or Scenarios na pwede nyo i-consider assuming you want to trade this particular setup. And we'll have that trade example towards the end of the video. I wanted to sandwich the two trades, okay, at the front and at the end, tas sa gitna yung mga Q&A natin because those answers sa mga tanong nyo will help you understand 
yung mga pag-uusapan natin sa second train example natin towards the end of the video. So, let's head to our Q&A right now. So, let's go through a few questions, no? Uh, first question, does this work on other time frames? So, I got a lot of questions na more or less nag-revolve around this thesis or this idea na pwede bang gamitin ko yung same concept pero i-apply ko sa magkaibang time frame. Kunwari, daily RSI yung hinahanap ko magparabolic muna tapos itatrade ko sa hourly or itatrade ko sa H4, di ba? Or whatever. So does this work on other time frames? And what I can answer you and what Senior Spy Frat also answered is depende po to sa backtest nyo. Ang turo po talaga ni Senior Spy Frat, yung system niya is based on the weekly and the daily. Now, whether or not na magiging effective to para sa inyo on other time frames, kailangan kayo na po yung magre-research kasi labas na po yun sa sistema na tinuro niya. Okay? Kung gusto nyong testingin, kung nag-work ba siya na kunyari daily hourly or daily H4, or kukunyari, weekly, tapos kakombo niya H4, or whatever, any other combination that you can think of, then you need to backtest that thoroughly. You need to backtest it. Hanapin niyo po yung statistics, hanapin niyo yung win rate, intindihin niyo ng mabuti, and then you start forward testing the theory to see if it's something that's going to be profitable for you. Okay? Because at the end of the day, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is untested na idea. And ayaw naman natin mag-trade using an untested idea, di ba? Kasi di natin alam what we can expect from it. So be sure na pag-aaralan nyo muna ng mabuti and then implement nyo at subukan nyo. Okay? Next. Does this work on other RSI period settings? Okay, so uh, sa RSI 14 ba or RSI 5 or RSI 20, gumagana din po ba to? Okay? Ang masasagot ko dyan, pareho sa sinagot namin kanina. Okay? Kailangan nyo po munang subukan bago nyo i-implement. Kasi si Senior Spy Frat po talaga, ang gamit po niya is RSI 30. Now, I received a few comments na, eh kasi sa BOH may turo po na ganito or may turo na ganyan. And that's all fine and well, no? Pero ang tinuturo po namin ni Senior Spy Frat dito is yung original theory niya. Kung may mga dinagdag po yung BOH, ah... Uh, Kumbaga, proprietary na po yun sa kanila. Hindi naman po siguro tama na ituro namin yung mga dinagdag nang hindi naman po si Senior Spy Frat mismo ang nagdagdag dun sa sistema niya. So, ang itituro lang po namin is yung sistema po mismo na gamit ni Senior Spy Frat. And the RSI period settings that he uses is 30, no? So, if you want to use 20, 22, 14, 5, 3, whatever, kailangan nyo rin po muna siyang i-backtest at i-forward test ng mabuti before you decide to implement it permanently with your trading system. Alright? So, another common question na natatanggap namin is, does it work in any market? And the answer is yes, no? Now, I am not gonna sit here and say na pwede nyo siyang subukan kunyari sa Turkish stock market or something because yun, syempre, hindi ko pa na-try yun eh. Pero, when I say in any market, that means yung common markets na pinagtitrade na ng mga tao, meaning yung mga uh, kahit sa Singapore stock market, US stock market, crypto, uh, forex, and things like that. Uh, we have tested this and we've seen that it works in those markets as well. Okay? And then, finally, yung final question natin, and this is the question that I received the most from comments, from DMs, and so on, no? How do you set your stop loss sa parabolic theory? So, to make sure na masagot ko talaga sa inyo ng buong-buo yung sagot ni Senior Spy Frat, uh, I've posted his answers here almost verbatim, no? Inayos ko lang ng konti para uh, magkasya sa slides natin. Alright? So, part 1. First, we have PHR, that's parabolic high risk, and EPHR, extreme parabolic high risk, to guide us. It guides us when to slice and when to sell all at once. Okay? So, yun yung unang-una. No? Next, we also have Petuel bearish divergence to alert us to be cautious moving forward. So, again, maaring nakapasok na kayo, tapos may mag-form na strong bearish divergence or Petuel bearish divergence 
Now, while it's not a signal in and of itself na kailangan tumakbo na, it does advise us na, okay, kailangan alerto na tayo, kailangan maingat na tayo moving forward kasi may nakita na tayo na hindi ka nais-nais. Okay? Next part na answer ni Senior Spy Frat, may iba pang mga paraan. Ano yung other ways? If the RSI falls below 70, so kunyari, uh, weekly parabolic yung sinusundan natin, if the weekly RSI falls below 70, then labas na tayo, no? Employing the 10 EMA, so this is from uh, Sir Petuel na method, you can apply the 10 EMA as your trail stop, no? Pwede rin yung ibahin. Kung gusto nyo, mas mabilis pa na EMA 9 or gusto nyo MA 10, MA 12, whatever. Okay? That is, kumbaga, on your discretion na. Okay? Just because gamit po ni Sir Petuel yung 10 EMA, it doesn't mean that it's the best EMA. Okay? Nasa sa inyo pa rin po yun. Kung saan kayo komportable. Kung meron kayong moving average or whatever na ginagamit sa current system nyo, then perhaps you can adapt that as well. Just be sure lang Tulad na sinabi natin sa ibang mga questions na you need to backtest it thoroughly and then forward test it thoroughly bago nyo implement ng tuluyan diba? para hindi naman po natin binabalik sa market yung kinikita natin. Okay? And then next, you can use lower time frames and employing the B-bands or the spy bands as a way to trail your stop. So ano po ibig sabihin nito? So let's say na pumasok tayo dahil pasok na lahat ng mga parameters natin. Okay? weekly RSI above 70, daily RSI above 70, then uh, weekly RSI is above daily RSI. So, pumasok na tayo. Ngayon, tumaas na yung price. Nag-move na. E kaso, medyo malayo yung B-bands. Kunyari sa daily, sa daily chart, no? So, what you can do if you want is to move down to a lower time frame, maybe the 4-hour, maybe the hourly, and then use the spy bands there as a way to trail your stop. So, same as always, pwede nyong gawin either as soon as ma-hit, meaning the price falls below the spy bands or the B bands of your preferred lower time frame, out na kayo. Or pwede nyo rin hintayin mag-close yung candle bago kayo mag-out. That's completely up to you. And again, both have their pros and cons. Waiting for a candle to close or closing intraday or whatever, lahat po yun may pros and cons. Wala pong isang method na garantya na hindi kayo mawiwip, na garantya na makastap kayo lagi ng maayos. Alright? Now, meron pong gustong ipahayag na message sa inyo si Senior Spy Frat about the parabolic theory system. Okay? So, I'm just gonna post it here and read it to you. The most difficult part in parabolics is psychology. Kasi gusto natin lagi sa high makasel Pero this is not what we are advocating. Maybe, lucky tayo makabenta sa top. So, paminsan-minsan talaga. Pag luck is on your side, mabebenta at mabebenta mo sa top. It happens. Pero, there's no telling talaga. One way to counter this sort of psychological behavior is through slicing. So, as we discussed, slicing is selling part of your position as price moves up. Okay. So, kunyari, nagkasunod-sunod na green candle, nagkaroon ng red candle, di kayo komportable, bawasan ng konti yung posisyon. ba Something like that. Or for example, every strong green candle, diba? pwede kayo mag-slice ng konti. That's totally on you, no? Kung paano nyo gustong i-approach, kung saan kayo komportable, yun yung gagamitin nyo pamamaraan. The key RSI levels ng parabolics ay level 70, so that's kapag ka nagparabolic na tayo, then 74.25, 80, 83, and 90. So essentially, as sinasabi po dito ni Sir Spyfrat is pwede rin natin gamitin yung RSI numbers mismo to choose kung saan tayo magtitrim. So kunyari, daily, pumasok tayo dahil 70, di ba? Now once kunya daily RSI hit 74.25, pwede mag-slice tayo ng konti. Pag nag-hit ng 80, slice ulit. Alam natin, EPHR na to halos, pero maaaring hindi, di ba? Maaari na ang daily RSI is above weekly RSI, nag-80 na siya, pero weekly RSI is still 70 plus. So, because of that, pwedeng mag-slice na tayo. Tapos, pag nag-83, slice ulit. 90, slice ulit. And so on, no? 
you can use these numbers as a guide. Okay? Dahil, sabi nga ni Senior Spyfrat, using them well for their purpose limits the emotional side of trading. Kasi, nakafocus ka na dun sa levels where you need to apply the process. In this case, the numbers given above, no? Compared to blindly, quote-unquote, enjoying the FOMO run, then biglang mag-burst or magpara-burst, tapos magpapaunahan na magbenta or maglabasan yung mga traders slash investors. ba? Compared to that, and trust me, if someone is not adapt to this kind of thing, ma-freeze ka. Hindi ka makakabenta. So doing it this way helps you do things as emotionless as possible while at the same time applying a system okay na you can focus on para hindi kayo naguguluhan hindi kayo nako confuse basta if x happens then i do y okay kaya po tayo may mga ganitong levels okay so guys uh, i've answered most of the questions that are commonly asked so far a few of the questions I purposely left out kasi masasagutan sila sa mga future videos natin when we start talking about ceiling theory, 20% rule, uh, Goku, and so on. No? So be sure to look forward to those videos para masagot yung ibang mga katanungan nyo. For now, let's move on to yung second trading example natin. Okay? So let's go. Now, for our next trade example, I said it was slightly more recent lang than the previous one we discussed. And the reason for that was only because this trade took a little longer. Natapos tong trade around mid-December ng 2017. Okay? Kung nyo, yung RSI nito, una siyang nag-above 70 around here, July 17, week of July 17. Okay? Now, pansin ninyo rin, kailan siya nag-below 70, which is around here, the week of December 11. Okay? Now, let's go down to the daily and discuss the actual trade that I took. Zoom out. Let's find that area. Okay? So, napansin ko na that the weekly RSI was above 70. So, I was waiting for a trigger dito sa daily time frame, which was for it to go above 70 as well. And I got that in this candle. Okay? So I got in on the close of this candle, which was at 1.23. Now, from there, mapapansin nyo, hindi siya nag-stay above RSI 70 sa daily. Pero walang nangyayari sa price kundi tumataas. So wala rin akong magawa kundi to hold. Dahil sinusundan ko nga yung system, and because I'm following the system, wala pang cut na nagaganap. The B bands were not broken. RSI 17, the weekly, did not breach. Pababa. So, wala akong magawa. Hintay. Diba? So, what happened? I just waited and the trade took a few months. So, from July uh, 19 all the way hanggang dito sa December 11. Hawak-hawa ko lang to. Price moved up. Moved around. Hindi naman siya nag-breach ng any support. Diba? Walang nabasag na support eh. It just kept moving higher. Hindi rin nabasag yung B-bands. Dito, 39 niya bumaba. Tapos, intraday din, nag-close siya pataas. So, hindi siya nag-close beneath. So, I, wala. Hindi ko rin siya kinat at that candle. Saan ako nag-stop out? Dito na. In this candle here. In this candle here, the RSI weekly, as I mentioned, okay, kasi to start of the week to eh, did fall below 70 and nag-close siya beneath the B-bands. Therefore, I closed the trade at 1.58. Now, as you can see, yung gains ng trade na to was around 28.5%. Minus ko ano man yung comms, no? And fees. Hindi siya kasing taas no una nating example. But, dito nyo maikita yung new one says kasi. Paano yan? Yung RSI sa daily, hindi naman nag-70. So, hindi natin siya nakita nagparabolic. Pero, the trade idea was still valid. Diba? Weekly, RSI was above 70. And if we did look at the weekly chart, did we go parabolic? Yes, we shot higher. Much higher. Diba? We did shoot much higher. Pero sa daily, hindi siya sumunod. Diba? Hindi natin nakuha yung quote-unquote perfect setup ng parabolic theory. But we were still able to trade it, okay, because we have the framework 
to put our idea around. Meron tayong kaalalay to make sure na, okay, meron tayong ganitong idea, ito yung kailangan natin gawin. What invalidates that idea? Kasi dapat lumalabas tayo sa trade upon idea invalidation. Diba? It's not that we come out of the trade just because, eh kasi ganun eh, feel ko lang today eh. <laughs> Baka masama pakiramdam ko, sulalabas na ako. So, we exit a trade because the, the idea that we had has been invalidated. In this particular instance, RSI ng weekly fell below 70 and at the same time, nagfall na yung price below B-bands. As you can see from here, price actually went higher, diba? which is a different story. But I wanted to highlight this trade because lahat ng pwedeng pasakit sa ulo nangyari. Hindi yun sumunod yung daily RSI papuntang 70 after initially giving us a sneak peek, kung baga, diba? Tapos, nagkaroon pa tayo ng fake out sa B-bands. Kung kunwari, intraday ka nagkakat, then mapapakat ka. Ako, I typically cut end of day, so hindi ako napakat at this time. Hindi ko na benta sa tuktok kasi di naman tayo nag EPHR, hindi rin tayo nag PHR. Lahat wala. ba? Wala yung common sign sa hinahanap natin, pero we were still able to trade it successfully using the framework na galing po kay Senior Spyfrat. Okay? At bakit natin siya na-trade successfully? Kasi lahat na pinag-usapan natin kanina na kailangan mag-forward test, kung ano man yung idea mo, kailangan mag-back test, kailangan alam mo yung ginagawa mo prior to implementation. Because we know the system inside out, because Senior Spyfrat knows the system inside out, we were able to execute even though things didn't go exactly the way that we hoped that they would. This also shows na kapag kayo weekly RSI is above 70, tas yung daily nag-dip, kakat ka kaagad, mapapasama ka lang. Mapapasama yung situation mo. Okay? So you need to know what invalidates your trade idea in case you decide na, oh, you know what? I do want to study. Paano ko kunyari gusto ko gamitin daily and hourly or daily and H4? Diba? Kailangan alam nyo inside out para when the time comes and you need to execute, walang hesi hesitation. Alright? Okay, so dito po nagtatapos yung video natin, no? Uh, so you may have noticed na baka may ibang portions na iba yung bosses ko. Uh, that's because I had to record this over the course of ilang days. So multiple parts ng video just to make sure na number one, masagutan ko lahat ng mga, sagot, mga, mga tanong nyo, no? Uh, yung mga kinuha kong answers from Sir Spyfrat, I wanted to make sure na ma-explain ko sila ng mabuti sa inyo so I internalized some of it a bit then before recording it. And also, uh, some of you may be thinking, bakit mas luma yung mga examples sa pinakita nyo sa amin? Ibig ba sabihin, hindi na siya gumagana ngayon? Hindi ganon, no? Uh, I purposely chose examples kasi na pasok do sa circumstance na gusto kong ipakita. Kanya-kanyang trade, may kanya-kanyang flavor yan. May kanya-kanyang ganap. Diba? They don't all work the same way. Diba? So, even though I've taken a lot more trades using yung parabolic theory to really show, number one, yung quote-unquote perfect na move na uh, walang hirap-hirap, walang hintay-hintay, dread-dredcho lang, I had to go back to a particular trade. To show a trade na kahit na daily RSI, bumaba na ng 70, tumuloy pa rin yung pag-angat, I had to go back to a particular trade. Okay? So, yun yung dahilan kaya mas luma. Because I really went out of my way to go find really good examples para precise siya dun sa mga gusto namin ipakita sa inyo ng mga circumstances. Okay? So, I hope na natuwa kayo at may natutunan kayo dito sa Three part natin ng parabolic theory, no? it went longer than I initially, an <laughs> initially anticipated, initially expected. But ganun talaga, sometimes parang yung lesson nagkakaroon ng sariling buhay. No? And I wanted to make sure na each and every single piece of nuance, each and every single piece of knowledge na alam ko at nakuha ko at natutunan ko from Senior Spyfrat ay na-impart ko sa inyo. And as always guys, maraming maraming salamat po sa panonood. I really, really appreciate it. Good luck and happy trading.